Hello everyone and welcome to Dragon Ball Tenkai Budokai Tenkai G3. Um So something I just wanted to do just run was just run different fighting game tournaments with AI just fighting each other. Pretty much to the first AI to win three matches, advances to the next round, while the loser goes to the loser bracket. Pretty much I'm doing this while doing Fantasy Star 3. I know I was doing Kirby Nightmare and Dreamland, but... Eh. Just gonna do one less play at a time, so... As a little side thing, Budokai Tenkaichi 3. And thanks to my cousin, I have a bracket, which... Pretty much the brackets that she made were for East Saga. So the first one being the Saiyan Saga, but she put Bard up because most likely it's like what Bardock is before the Saiyan Saga, but eh, we might we might as well. I, wait, we could have used Fasha, couldn't we? You know, then you would have made an excuse, you could use Frieza. And King Vegeta. Eh. But anyways, if I can't, then I'll find a way to, but I will try to have the bracket displayed. So you all can see it. But if I can't, then... As time goes on, I'll find a way too, so... But anyways, the first opponent is Early Piccolo. Going up against Bardock and... Okay, yeah, none of them have... Yeah. Now, I could do Red Patara. I only had the patience to put in a password for Goku. Because... Early... Games where you had to put in passwords and stuff, it was like, eh. And the Lego games are the worst of it. Like, Lego Batman and all that. But, anyways, because I'm not editing this. Oh, Bardock can go. Uh oh. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Um. Random stage. You know, random music. No, I can't do random because if it picks the world tournament, what happens is that if the. Unlike Xenoverse, if you step out the ring and hit the floor, it's, the game just ends. Well, that match ends in... No, we're not doing it that way. Whoever gets effed up so bad where they can't stand no more will be how we determine the winner, so... Let's do this. Mm. Pick a little planet. Also, if the volume is low, that's because this game is loud. Because I had to, in order to adjust the volume on for me, I had to turn down my computer volume, turn down that my headset volume, because turning down the computer volume did not help. It was still loud on for me. So, if my voice is louder than the game, that's why. So this game gets loud. Now hopefully I did. Uh oh. 
I did put the AI on hard, right? I'm used to like Steed OJ Red Batar where the Red Batar just go crazy. But so far, Piglo is getting his butt whooped by a scene how, unu how usual. Oh. Now I will be doing a tournament for the mod of Budokai. Budokai Tenkaichi 4. But that would be after we finish 3. And Piccolo, you might as well spar that. Really just ran into that. Piccolo, you might as well do a Bardock. Because this has happened before when me and my cousin was doing AI tournaments last month. The AI would get so close to losing that they would just win out of nowhere. And I feel like. Okay. I was. I was about to say if somehow. Okay, because I need to fix something, but if somehow Piglo makes a comeback, then it's literally what happened whenever we did a test. Okay, yeah, computer is going very strong. Oh yeah, I forgot, in this game, stuff is trademarked for, s for some reason. Alright anyways, now I will be doing, I sadly have to do this, where we get a different perspective, so, I'm gonna have to always do pretty much like what I just did, and we're gonna take this above planet Vegeta, oh so why has no other Dragon Ball game done mini games in between? The low times? Well, low times aren't gonna be existent no more with next gen consoles, but. Whatever. I'm gonna try not to do like Steed OJ and rant about a Xenoverse. Two. Because I can easily do that. Even though, like. With a Xenoverse 2, I'm mostly playing offline. And again, what I like about fighting games is they have a lot of offline content. And the Xenoverse 2 has a lot pretty much. It's not like Fighter Z where it feels like it's forcing you to play online. Which I'm glad they have like party matches now where it's like just for fun. But if a fighting game I'm just going to be playing offline, I'm going to just most likely now get it on the PC. Like a Xenoverse 2, I have it on the PC and I honestly can't wait for that revamped version 4 mod. Also, uh, we will try to do AI fights with that game. My cousin did say that. There might be a way, because it is a mod for Street Fighter V to do AI versus AI. So there might be one for Xenoverse 2. And wow, this is actually close. This is way more close than um last last match. Oh, you know, I think Piglo's special beam cannon is an instant. I forgot how much damage it does. But I think if it hits Bardock now, it will just kill him. Oh, Piglo's not gonna... ...really do it. But yeah, I, games that I plan on doing, like AI versus AI tournaments are like... 
Try to do it every Street Fighter. I know old ones aren't really gonna probably work. Street Fighter 4 and 5. If we can get the mod set up. Piccolo lost again. This round goes to Bardock. Xenoverse if we can. And... I'm gonna save the future. Bardock, that's a lot. And, um... Maybe King of Fighters? Did King of Fighters have an AI... Versus AI thing? Well, 13, specifically. I don't think it did. But again, you got modern community. And the modern community always just... Pulls everything out their ass, so... Because I didn't, I don't even know how it was possible for a Street Fighter V AI versus AI mod. Come on, let's see what but I think that when you Come need the cheat engine, you don't, you can't use a mod loader, so... I don't want to screw up something while I'm trying, like, doing, playing Street Fighter V on my own. And then I installed the AI mod, and now I no longer can play the game. But this was probably a bad idea because I don't think Piccolo has... can ever win a- he's just not gonna block. Like, Blart- Blardock. Bardock has blocked Piccolo's attacks. Besides the rushing one. But Piccolo is just not gonna dodge. Man, why can't we have that super in Xenoverse 2? Oh shit, I'm doing a steed over there. You know, let's just talk about Xenoverse 2. It's better than what it used to be. Well, for offline. What I mean by that is... Again, if you're just a casual fighting game player and you're just doing offline content, I like... Stuff with your friends, or like... Friends like over... You know, Wi-Fi or just at home. I would recommend it Universe 2. Cause I think it will honestly be a good, you know, like just times and bought up one. Wow. Just, just gonna rub salt in the room, aren't we? Well, that was three and zero. Take a little you. You need to work on yourself, buddy. I don't. That was just a disappointment. Okay, anyways, thank God it's t t just the first row. We don't have to keep scrolling. Goku versus Krillin. I I apparently, Krillin's name is trademark. But, um. Damn, what stage are we gonna do? Should have probably done nothing but. Saiyan Saga stages. And I guess Planet... What was Planet? Like, it was just supposed to be... Um... Like... Planet Vegeta. I think it is. We could do these stages. But I mainly want to keep stuff to the... Saiyan Saga. Mm. Really wish I could do random, but you got the world tournament stages, I can't. Let's... Let's just do Wasteland. But anyways, yeah, like, Xenoverse 2, I would say... 
Get it now. But no, because you have to really get the DLC. Krillin, how about we go around for old time's sake? Alright, come on, Goku. Oh, the Krillin and I have here in the same a Saiyan saga. But that's the thing, you will have to get the DLC for more offline content. And this game has a lot of D of DLC. Cause I think the last DLC I own is the pack that had Android 21 and PyCon. I didn't buy it. It, it was a codex version. Because I'm not buying this game for the third time. I already own this game for the PS4 and the Xbox One. I'm not about to own it. I'm not about to pay for it on the um PC. Because for one, I didn't even know it would work with the revamp um, DLC. Well, my computer. We'll handle the revamp DLC. You know, if I was still live streaming, if you know what didn't happen, happened. For some person. But if I was still doing a live stream, live streams, and no, no, because I think Twitch, you have to be an affiliate before you can do do like people can place bets you make no money off of it but you no know, we could have done like place bets for like points also is Goku gonna make a comeback Ah, this must be Dragon Ball Super Trailer. Hmm, I must install Budokai Tenkaichi 4. Accidentally put the, um, Dragon Ball Super Trailer. Don't worry ladies and gentlemen, I won't go on a rant about Dragon Ball Super. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yes. Dragon, Dragon Ball Super was just... It was good to watch since I had nothing else to watch, but... Dragon Ball Super was just boring. And that's all I'm gonna say about that. By the way, it's round two between Goku and Krillin. And I feel like Krillin is gonna win this match. Ah, Goku, you not like your father. Your brilliant your brilliant scientist of a father. He knew how to block. You don't. Not only did your son pick out the piccolo for not dodging. You did as well. Goku can't find Krillin. That is one thing I don't miss about old Dragon Ball games, especially this one. Solar Flare was annoying. Because when you got hit with Solar Flare, you automatically got unlocked from your opponent. If you don't know what being unlocked from your opponent does, unlike a Xenoverse, you can't vanish from an attack. So if that attack is coming directly after you, you have to move. You can't just vanish. Which, thank God Xenoverse did that, but... I think it's Xenoverse... Can his universe you vanish when you're not locked on to an opponent? Like if they do an attack while wow, this match is close. 
Oh. Yep, nope, Goku lost. Oh, never mind. No. All of that training for nothing. Wow, the other person actually won a round. Piccolo, what happened? Honestly, I haven't played, sat down and really just played a Xenoverse 2 since I bought this laptop, downloaded the Codex version, which was in February or March. No, it was April, so May, June, July. Yeah, I haven't played it for three months. Now, let's just talk about Mortal Kombat 11. It's sad that a Xenoverse 2 has a longer lifespan than Mortal Kombat 11. To be, I think Mortal Kombat is just. I think it's just a. There's gonna be a dead series. Like, this is coming from someone who enjoyed every game but 11. And it's honestly disappointing because I didn't even know Ed Boon flat out said that when pa Combat Pack 2 came out, or like, when it was out for a while, that he flat out said that these, um,. I think he said for Combat Pack 3, when if it got when it got released, that the game was still gonna get supported, still gonna get DLC and costumes and stuff, TL DLC pretty much. But it's like it took them that long to say that hey, um, Mortal Kombat 11 is no longer getting supported, and this game has only what three years and it almost took him a year just to announce hey we're done because <laughs> i think the last thing that moto combat 11 got was a patch and those old movie com costume packs and that was Combat Pack 2. Wait, I lied. That was not Combat Pack 2. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Combat Pack 1, if you owned it, you got every DLC, DLC character in, that was in that pack for free when it came out. Or a little early, I think. And you got the costume packs. I think early or when they came out. But with Combat Pack 2 with the Rambo, Rain, and Melina pack, that Combat Pack 2, the movie costume I honestly thought would be free because, like, again, with Combat Pack 1, if you own the DLC, that Combat Pack. You got the D DLC costumes for free when they came out. For a few receptions, I think the Halloween one and another one you didn't. And one you had to pre-order. And on, at the math, did the same thing with its DLC. Which sadly I could not pre-order because at that time that was when COVID hit and that, everything was just a struggle then. So yeah, I, I got the deal. I had to buy a new controller as well. This controller was like eighty dollars. On top of having a pre-order expansion, which I think was like what? How m what was at the mass expansion? Cause the thing about at the mass expansion, I had to get the complete edition 
a a quote unquote com in my opinion a complete adventure at that time which was you got the game you got combat pack one you got combat pack one's dlc costume characters and you got everything with aftermath so i think that was what sixty dollars on top of an eighty dollar controller on top of having to pay for Game Pass, which was another 60. So yeah, that was... I couldn't at that time pre-order it. And Aftermath was a good expansion, but... Man, Combat Pack 2, what happened? I pre-ordered that, feel stupid pre-ordering it because... I didn't play a, a, I'll get to it later, but coming back to you, you if you pre-ordered it, you got the costumes which I honestly thought were cool. They are cool in my opinion. But then again the last thing we got for more combat 11 content wise was a movie pack which you had to pay for. It wasn't free. For owning Combat Pack 2. And then I think a patch and that was it. And the way it... Wow. No. All of that training for nothing. Well, the next person who wins this match is... Gonna Advanced. Is actually tied 2-2. Two and two. But... Hearing that Ed Boon flat out said that this game would get supported and it sounded like all the way kinda like as long as Fighter Z in a Xenoverse 2. Cause a Xenoverse 2 is still getting support even though Fighter Z is out. And that game's still getting support. And you can say Ultimate didn't get a long lifespan, but Sakurai flat out said that there were only going to be two fighter packs. And there's only one more character that needs to be revealed. And then I think, if I had to guess, there will be four more patch patches before the game just, you know, just ends. So I think the game will be fully completed and, and there will probably be a complete version of Smash Ultimate. I wouldn't be surprised. Please let that happen. This is 2021. I, I'm guessing... With Sagawai Final saying the final character will take a while, we most likely won't hear anything about that until... The, near the end of the year, December. Because this is July. And then if we count patches being... Well, Ed Boon counts patches being support. Content, which is no. That's just you fixing stuff because your last patch effed up stuff. Cough, cough, Shiva. But... Which I still think they didn't even fix. Shiva stopped being very spammable. But with Ultimate, I think it will officially end its anniversary in 2022. Holy crap. Man, this was actually a good matchup. But, the main hero always has to win. And Goku advances to the semifinals. And Krillin goes to the loser's bracket. Alright, next we have Vegeta versus. Radix trademark for some reason but um yeah let's go and get this started 
Let's go here. But yeah, I think Smash Ultimate, it's, it came out 18, so 19, 20. Its four year anniversary will probably be its end date for like patches and stuff. Unless Sakurai just lied, where he says, yeah, this was the last fighter pass. And then the screen just goes to black, and then the screen comes back with Sakurai just laughing, saying, yeah, you thought this, okay, um, technically, or like, no, the screen comes back, he's laughing. Then he's like, yeah, you thought there was only going to be two fighter passes. Then it shows, hey, 13 more characters, no. 14 more characters will be released in Fighter Pass 3, and that will be the official end. Which, to be honest, if... Oh yeah, I forgot Vegeta loves to spam his supers. Especially key-based ones, because Vegeta is a key-based character where his if it's like other stuff, like other, I think it's universe, where it's like his strike is weaker than his blast. His key supers and stuff will do more damage than his strikes. But honestly, if Smash Ultimate goes until its four year anniversary. Where it's four year anniversary, Sakurai said, and this is the end. Thank you for the four years. To be honest, that's gonna be depressing if the news is correct that. That Sakurai will be retiring, it will be. That will honestly be sad that. If this game goes all the way to its four year anniversary and then the last DLC trailer or like you know little thing like spotlight where he shows off that character's moves and stuff and then at the end of it Sakurai is like and thank you all for the four years supporting this game I am officially retiring. He's going out on a legacy. He went out with he's going out with the Kirby series and the Smash Ultimate series. I'll teach you to look. But I don't know, like Smash Ultimate honestly does feel like the last Smash Smash Brothers game. Cause then this game has been around since the 64 and every version of Smash was Honestly, I don't have a favorite Smash Brothers game. Get Melee was awesome. Brawl. Brawl was awesome. <laughs> Had to think about that for a second, but I like Brawl. Smash 4 was um, awesome and Ultimate is flat out amazing. And it's like... I don't I can't see Sakurai... Not doing DLC until the 4 year anniversary. Cause the thing about it, if the last character will be announced on the game's anniversary, third year anniversary, which is December of this year, I don't know what date, but it will be December of this year. And he announced the last character, and he announces that he's retiring. Like, dang! I wouldn't be surprised if he adds himself into the game. We're at their four game series. 
we finally get to play as Sakurai. And it's probably going to be something like you can't play with him online. You can only play as him offline because he's going to be that broken. And then like when you buy the DLC it says thank you for a long support of this game series. I hope you all hope you all enjoyed it. And thank you for putting a smile on my face every every time we made a game and every DLC that came out. Besides Bowser. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that was that was a time when Malif got announced. Man, that the whole America was just in war. <laughs> Japan was fine, but America, oof. Honestly, I didn't care. Kid is Fire Emblem. It's not saying that, oh, you're a Fire Emblem fan, oh, you're the reason why Balaf got at it. No, 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 no. One thing you should have expected it. Treehouse, every Fire Emblem game that came out, a character got added to Smash. Melee, Roy, Mark, Brawl, Ike. Why did Ike get put into Smash? Because of Path of Radiance, I think it was. Smash 4, why did Robin get put in because of Fire Emblem Awakening with Lucina? Why did... What was the other DLC that Fire Emblem got in 4? The Fire Emblem Face DLC. Face Conquest and all that, and Birthright. I think it's just called Faith, which I still haven't finished. I got burnt out, but hey, they got a DLC because their game got a nap. That game came out in Smash Bros. Life Lifetime. Was I talking that much, or was that match that the fastest match we ever had so far? But yeah. Okay, Google Chrome, please work. Okay, Vegeta just needs to win one more match. But, and then like Smash Ultimate, about Treehouse came out. Well, Three Houses, <laughs> Treehouse. Three Houses came out, and I'm not surprised that a Fire Emblem character got added. Cause to be honest, when I saw that people were mad, I'm like, are you all stupid? You can't see the pattern of when a Fire Emblem character is getting added. When a new Fire Emblem game comes out, a new character, that character is getting added into Smash. This has been going on since Melee. How are you that stupid? Still did not see this. And yes, I'm calling everyone that got mad at Balor being at it stupid. Because again, you couldn't see this? How? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and that's going to connect. That's gonna be... Yeah. But... I have to say one thing. Smash Ultimate is probably the one game where the DLC... I didn't disagree on the character. Like, this Smash Ultimate would probably have to be my favorite game where... A DLC got added and I didn't disagree with it. I was like, eh, who cares? And this game has so much variety. Like Steve from Minecraft being added into Smash. 
did not expect that. Persona being added. Did not expect. Oh, he's going to a grade 8. I don't think he can help. He got sliver. He got that tiny bit. Vegeta can probably... I think... It's two bars, right? Oh, we can't see now. Sleep? Why do you have sleep? You're a grade 8, why do you have... Whatever. And then, like, we got Terry Bogard added. Sephiroth added. Which I did not expect that to happen. Because the way that the deal Fighter Pass 2 was, we were getting nothing but... Wow. And Vegeta advances. But the way it seemed like we were getting nothing but... Heroes. Pretty much. And then... Sephiroth broke that chain. But anyways, um... Yamcha versus Gohan is next. But... Who else got added into DLC and Smash Ultimate? Cause there's a lot. Um, I don't, I don't know. But man, this game and this Ultimate was Ultimate is amazing. I don't own it because I don't own a Switch still. But my time playing it with my cousin because she owns the game and that's whenever we want to play a fighting game it's most likely will always be ultimate but like man that ultimate just that game came up before the decade ended so out of the 10 year of fighting games that came out, Ultimate will be my favorite in the 2010 to 20 time span. I think the second would be King of Fight. 13 came out. King of Fighters 13 came out in. Yeah, the 2010s. It would have to be 13, King of Fighters 13, Mortal Kombat XL. Um, Smash 4 might be up there. Yeah, I might say Smash 4. Ultra Street Fighter. Ultra Street Fighter, Ultra Street Fighter 4. Um, I would say five because it did get better with his offline content. Let me rephrase that. Oh, Yamcha won. That's a little taste of my wolf fang fist. But hey. Honestly, sounded like you were talking about your dick, Yamcha. But yeah, like Ultimate was have to be the best fighting game. In for me, it would have to be the best fighting game in the in the 2010 to 20 decade. <laughs> Mortal Kombat 11, damn sure is not on that list. Um, but to get back with NetherRealm Studios, if we're getting an Injustice 3, I'm not looking forward to it. Because 
East Injustice gameplay like is the Mortal Kombat game before that. Injustice 1 was more felt like Mortal Kombat 9 with its combo system. But a little bit more fluent. Injustice 2 really felt like Mortal Kombat X XL. Which was amazing. Um and Injustice 2 is a good game, but Mortal Kombat 11 going back to the Mortal Kombat 2 combo style. No, like that's the combo system in 11 is what made me not even want to play that game. Like Mortal Kombat 10, I felt like I could main every character. I main Sub Zero, I main Predator, I main. Can't count Jason. I main Kano, which was a surprise. Then I think I main. Who else did I main? Johnny Cage. But. Mortal Kombat, I just couldn't. And if their their next project is Injustice 3 and if it plays like in Mortal Kombat 11, I'm not getting it. But I don't even think it will be Injustice 3. Because didn't the Injustice comic stop which the game was off or the comic was off? Like was the game off of the comet, or was a comet off of the game? Uh, I can't fight anymore. I think the com. I think the game was off the comet. But I don't know if. <laughs> and also, I heard that we were getting that there was a chance that they were doing some type of Marvel fighting game. Which is like, I think a DC versus Marvel, which is like, okay, so who's making this? <laughs> and what I mean by that is, okay. is NetherRealm working with Capcom for this? Or is NetherRealm this by itself? And what would the future of Marvel vs. Capcom be? Because 4... Ooh, let's not talk about Capcom 4. But... I doubt we get a Mortal Kombat vs. DC. Because if we do, then it's most likely going to be Mortal Kombat vs... No, DC vs. Marvel. Wow, Gohan just helped melt it. But it will probably be what SNK and Capcom did. Capcom did the first two games, I think. Also, that was three and out Gohan, your disappointment. But if it is, they're gonna probably go the again Capcom versus SNK route. Where each company did their own thing. So like I think. 1 and 2 were Capcom. And then the third game was SNK. If I'm not mistaken. But. I, I don't know. And I know a lot of people would say. Mortal Kombat 11 was a good fighting game. But. I couldn't get into it, so no. But anyways, that was I. I'm gonna split this into parts, cause this is already 50 minutes. But I'm not gonna get on 14 just yet, so. But what I, how I'm gonna do this is that each 
part would be off of the round so this first part was off of the round one and loser round one then the next video will be the semi-finals and then pretty much we'll have to do the two semi-final loser round loser round two has is loser round two then loser round three then whoever wins loser round three goes and fights the person who is in the finals so yeah that's going to be another 50 minute long video so hope y'all enjoyed this one i'm gonna record the next part right after this but hope y'all enjoyed this and i see you guys in the next video take care